Well, welcome to this lesson on the Robot Car version 1. Now, if you've been following the tutorial on the Digital Town website, hopefully by now you've got the car all bought, built and put together. And if you've done the previous tutorials on the different uh, components, you'll know how the motor driver board works, the servo works and the ultrasonic sensor. So in this tutorial, all the bits are going together and we finish up with a car that actually works. So let's start with the exciting bit and see the car working. So this is the car charging around my kitchen. You'll see there's two sets of movements. When it meets an obstacle, you'll see the servo moves the sensor around in a number of steps as it looks for a way out. And when the car is actually driving forwards, you'll notice that the servo flicks backwards and forwards very slightly which is just looking for obstacles in its path I'll explain that as we get into the code so that's the car working and I must admit I was pretty excited when we got there so now the car's working and you can see that it's all worth the effort in the end let's get on and look at the Arduino IDE and see how the code works. So as you've seen the car is working it's not 100% perfect but it gives us something to start from and this is the first sketch that I've put together to build the whole car and have it all running together. Now I'm not going to explain the whole of this sketch because things like the motor driver board there's an example and a link here to a video tutorial I've done on that. The same with the ultrasonic sensor and the same with servos. Now within this sketch I use arrays and I did an, a lesson specifically for arrays. Again there's a link here within the code. For the wiring diagram to build the whole thing, again, there's a link to the, the project on the Digital Town website and you can see how everything is put together. So as we've already used, I'm using examples from previous sketches. As I wrote those examples, I actually made sure that I put the pins in the right order. So when it all came together, it all worked. These are the pins that are in use and as you can see, I've explained what each pin is being used for. Now in this one just as a little note as the car was running in a straight line you will have noticed that the servo was moving very slightly side to side. What it's doing is moving seven degrees either side of center. If you go again onto the tutorial page you'll see a whole tutorial and explanation on why this is happening and it was to do with the distance that the car can see an obstacle at. Uh, because of the angle of the sensor it only reads at a 15 degree angle. To get the whole width of the car to miss an obstacle if we had it in a fixed position you'd have to stop the car when something was quite a long distance out. So by moving it slightly backwards and forwards it meant that I could get closer to objects before I had to change direction which in the size of my kitchen is pretty important. Um, there was another issue that I had where the car got stuck uh, when things were too close um, which you'll see a little thing that I did in the code to sort that one out. What I found within my kitchen was that the sound could actually bounce off one wall and off another wall and cause some real weird issues. Um, so what happens within the code is the car will drive along with the sensor moving the seven degrees. If it gets close to an obstacle it then stops and then it goes through a series of movements at 10 degree intervals while it looks for the best route to escape. Now if it found that it had got itself into a really tight sort of boxed in corner where it couldn't find any good route to escape through it will actually do a short reverse and then try again. So let's whiz through the code. So most of this if you've done the previous tutorials you'll understand exactly what we're looking at. Servo with the servo pin on pin 12, the motor driver board, pins all listed, ultrasonic sensor 
pins as before. So new bits for this sketch. I've got a variable here that is set to 400. So this is the minimum distance. So when the car is running in a straight line, if something comes within 400 millimeters, the car will stop, the motors will stop. Now, that doesn't mean that the car stops because it's got some inertia, so it keeps rolling. And that's why that distance may seem a long way, but in the time that it takes for the car to stop, it will travel probably another 100 millimeters or so. Then we've got the first of our arrays. This is what I would call the running scan positions. There's three uh, items in the array and you'll see 90 in the center. 90 is when the servo is pointing straight ahead. 83 slightly to one, seven degrees to one side. 97, seven degrees to the other side. So when you're watching the car going in a straight line, you'll see that uh, servo just moving slightly side to side and that's it getting a sort of a reading from all the area in front of the car. Now when the car stops it then uses the stopped scan positions. These are set at 10 degree intervals and they start at sort of 30 degrees and work their way to 150 degrees. That keeps it well within the 180 degree arc that a servo can turn and I couldn't see the point in turning it any further. You could alter the code, make it do that if you wanted, but this was my first version, so I just gave it a go. I then have two more arrays. Uh, this one stores the distances that are read when it's moving in a straight line. This, is, this array holds the distances that are recorded when it's in a stopped position. I've then got an integer that I call OK to drive. If OK to drive equals zero, the car will stop. If OK to drive is equal to one, no obstacle is detected, so the car will drive. Going down, we've only got one library, which is servo h. We declare our servo, if you remember from the servo lessons. And then here are a whole set of functions. Again, if you go to the top and you look at the L29A10 basic motor control functions, these were a set of functions to simplify the driving of the car. So I can actually call the function forward, right, reverse, right, forward, left, reverse, left, stop motors, drive forward, drive reverse. It just makes it a little bit easier. I don't think this, this script at the moment doesn't use uh, reverse left and reverse right, but they're in there just because I copied and pasted straight out of the other example. Now below that we've got the function get distance from the um, ultrasonic sensor. Again, if you do the tutorial, you'll see that this is taken straight out of this script. So I'm not going to explain how all of that works. You can have a look at that tutorial if you get stuck. There's then one huge function called find stop to best direction, which is the function that it calls when it's looking for a new direction. Now I'll come back to that in a minute because it's quite a long function. We'll go to the setup, which comes next. Nothing unusual. I do have the serial running and quite a lot of comments going out to the serial monitor. The reason for that is when I was testing the car, I put the car up on blocks on my desk and it just meant that I could see what was going on as I put my hand in front of the sensor. It's just a nice way to be able to test things. I could have taken all the comments out and I suppose the code would have run fractionally faster, but to be honest, I've left it in because I'll be making a lot more modifications as we go on. So then we've got the L298N pins for the motor driver board. We've got the ultrasonic sensor pins. And then we attach the servo and just as in the servo test script, it does a quick movement when the car first starts just to make sure that the servo is moving. Once we've got the end of the setup, we go straight to the main loop. So main loop, first thing we do, OK to drive equals one. So I'm setting the car to drive and I'm saying I want you to drive. But before I'm doing anything, the first thing I do then is I scan 
through the three scan positions and you'll notice we move the servo to the next position then there's a delay now usually I don't like using delay but in this particular uh, set of code that I've written it doesn't interfere with anything so I'm going to use the delay now it delays for 0.1 of a second the reason it does that is that we need to write the servo and tell it to move and then I'm allowing 0.1 of a second for the servo to move to the new position if you try to run the scan before the servo has got to position it will fire the signal off in one direction and then of course it'll be pointing in another direction when the echo returns now while it's driving that might not make too much of a problem but I wanted to make sure I didn't cause myself any issues so after point one of a second it fires a scan so basically as the car is driving it's running about sort of nine scans per second it's actually doing ten but it does all three positions at least one three times per second so it goes through the scan positions it finds out what the distance is and then it says if the scan return is less than the minimum distance which we set at 400 then it sets OK to drive to zero. Now what this means is as soon as it's finished this little bit of code if OK to drive is smaller than one so zero it's going to stop the car it's about to hit something so it's going to stop the car and it will call the function to find the escape route however if it's okay to drive and there's no problems it will just call the function drive forward which keeps the motors just running in a straightforward direction and while it's doing that it continues to move the sensor backwards and forwards looking for any problems so the big issue is if it comes up against an obstacle how does it escape and that is why it calls this function find stopped best direction it's the best thing i could think of for the name so it's the finding the best direction while the vehicle is stopped so let's go up to the function and look at how it works it's a very long function when you first look at it but actually it's um it's not too bad once you get into it so the first thing it has some local variables one is a steering delay that equals 10. I'll explain what this does in a minute. We've then got an integer for the best direction. We've got an integer for the longest distance. The best direction gives me the position in the array that has the best route found out so far and longest distance just gives me the distance that has been found, the best distance so far. So once again we have a for loop where it works through the scan positions and it's going through 13 scan positions this time because we're using the stopped scans rather than the three positions which are in the moving scan positions. So we move the servo as before. Now in the previous um, bit of code when the car is moving along you remember we only uh, waited for a delay of 100 this time I'm delaying for 250 now the reason for that is it's moving 10 degrees instead of 7 degrees but the big issue is once it's moved through all 13 positions it then goes from the far left to the far right and that can take a little bit of time so that is why I put a slightly longer delay because I found it wasn't getting to position before it was sending out its first scan and it was bringing some really weird results so again once it's waited and as the car's stationary there's no problem with the amount of time it takes it then does its scan and it gets the distance then what it says is if the scan position if the distance that it got is greater than 5000 it makes the value zero now the reason I did this and I've put it in the code is I got some odd results where I was getting figures of 20,000 plus now this is definitely an error because firstly the sensor is not accurate to that distance 
so it's definitely an error so I thought that because of the surfaces that I was running around it was probably bouncing off something but regardless what I decided to do was anything that was over a distance of 5000 I was going to regard as an error and therefore give it a value of zero to make sure that I didn't go shooting off in that direction which was happening when I first tried it. So that's just a way of if you like taking a bug out of the way that the sensor was receiving something. Now once again just like when it's traveling along if the scan position is the longest distance that is greater than the longest distance that it's found so far it will put the new distance as the longest distance and it also then saves the best direction uh, as it in the array that's stored so that when we get to the end and it's gone through all of these we can say okay which was the longest distance which was the best direction now if the longest distance that it can find in any position is less than 200 millimeters the car goes into reverse for 0.3 of a second and then the motors stop that was just a way of saying okay my car's got itself completely boxed in i'm stuck let's move back and try again it was in case the it came across an obstacle and because of the car's momentum when i turned off the motors if it continued to drive and got boxed in it would never find its way out so that's a little escape route if it finishes up like that i've only seen it done a couple of times when i've been testing the car but otherwise we're assuming that it's found a best route out and if you remember here we saved the best direction and then what we do is we do a switch statement on the best direction now if it's case zero if we think about our array I know that that was 60 degrees to the right so what I tell it to do here is go forward and right and then I make it go for 60 times the steer delay now the steer delay if we go a little bit further up was 10 so what this is doing is if it's got to do a really hard right turn it's 60 times 10 so I've got 600 which gives me 0.6 of a second so for a really hard right turn the motors will run for 0.6 of a second a slightly lesser hard turn 0 0.5 0 0.4 0 0.3 0 0.2 0.1 drive forward it's never going to be drive forward because it wouldn't have stopped if it could have driven forwards and then there's the equivalent going out on the left hand side the steer delays increasing as the left turn gets sharper and sharper and the car basically will do its turn and then stop I did put a default in in case something goes wrong stops the motors and if you've got the serial monitor running it'll give you an error saying there's, there is a steering error something's gone wrong once it's done that tiny little maneuver then what it does is it ent exits the function and uh, we then go back down to our main loop so it will exit this function and once again OK to drive will be one and it will do a test if it still finds there's a blockage it will run the best escape route function again and it will keep trying to escape once it's got a clear run OK to drive will equal one and the car will just drive as before so that's how the whole uh, sketch works uh, if you've got questions on individual sections then again go to the top of the page and there's the link to how the motor driver works the ultrasonic sensor and the servos so that's the sketch and if you upload it to your car you'll be charging around the kitchen just as I was so I hope the video was helpful for you and hopefully your car will be charging around soon Again, the Digital Town website's got all the information on what I did to build the car. And the next plan is to do some upgrades and make the car work in a slightly better and more efficient way. So if you enjoyed the video, click the like and subscribe and hope to see you in a later video. Bye for now.